Hi, my name is Maria Cecilia Schwerthelm uh, from the University of Minnesota. And my presentation today is titled Lenguaje, Poder y Arte, Reimagining and Enacting Language Reclamation Through Embodied Arts-Based Pedagogies. And so this is a research story about um, well, my dissertation research, um, but it's a story about a class that I taught last year in the state of Oaxaca, the University of Oaxaca, in the Department of Languages. So I'm gonna tell you the story of this class. Um, Oaxaca, um, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is a state in Southern Mexico. It is Mexico's uh, linguistically and culturally most diverse state. Here's a map of the different nations and languages um, spoken in Oaxaca. So the university is a public university. It's located in the valley around here. And um, students converge there from communities uh, from all around the state. Um, so Oaxaca has also a very deep history of political resistance. And you see in the city, both in the city and the university, um, there's a lot of community building efforts, there's a lot of performance. So my class um, focused on embodied arts-based pedagogies seemed like a really good fit that also questioned ideologies. It just um, fit very well with the context in Oaxaca. Um, I was inspired by critical and decolonial uh, pedagogies. Um, these are often traced back to Freire and his relational methods um, that create um, the world through contextual political action, um, lived experience and um, reflecting together. So it's collective, it's creative, it's also dynamic and embraces complexity. Um, and in, it's informed by situated knowledges. So critical pedagogies um, fit very well with the arts and embodiment because, well, the arts are different ways of knowing. So we're making spaces uh, for different knowledges to create our own voice and to imagine ways to transform reality. Um, they're also embodied. And here I um, use embodiment as drawing attention to the bodies as agents of knowledge production. So challenging Eurocentric um, binaries of mind and, mind and body. Um, and part of this uh, focus on embodiment and the arts was a practice of uh, performance. So opening spaces for participation and reflection through moving our bodies um, Augusto Boal in Theater of the Oppressed, he talks about theater as a space of struggle and the site for rehearsal for the revolution. So I can imagining different realities. So the research question that guided this uh, study um, is what are the possibilities for language reclamation through embodied arts-based pedagogies at a language education institution? So again, um, this is a higher education institution. Um, the Department of Languages trains students to be language teachers. So it's an undergraduate program. I used a bricolage approach to research. Um, critical pedagogy is inexorably linked to research in that it questions dominant ideologies and um, so the politics of knowledge production, what counts as knowledge? Um, again, challenging Eurocentric uh, reductionist and positivistic uh, approaches. Uh, the bricolage employs different tools. Uh, it is transdisciplinary. Um, but beyond the transdisciplinarity, it also highlights the relationship between the researcher's ways of seeing and her personal history. It, also embraces um, it also embraces situated knowledge. So the knowledge is 
that we all bring to the classroom. So both me as, as a researcher and the student and the relationships that we build there. Now, as a Mexican um, German uh, woman whose own indigeneity has been erased uh, for many generations, um, this is also a personal journey. It was also in many ways my, uh, my own reclamation um, story. So I had all these great ideas about performance and the art uh, <laughs> and building community, but then uh, 2020 with the pandemic happened and then we were all sent to a virtual world. <laughs> so here we are in Zoom. And of course this again changed all the possibilities and we had to adapt to this new context. Um, and well, part of this, I had to reinvent many of the performance activities, for example, but many of this had also some a positive and unexpected outcomes. For example, students went back to their communities, um, so they were now closer to families, uh, parents, grandparents, and they could learn from and with them. Um, so I had 26 students in the class and 23 of them participated in the study. Five of them identified as speakers of uh, Zapotec, Mistec, uh, or Chontal, and another five at least they uh, heard the language from parents or grandparents, so they have very close heritage and they, I, they were, they described themselves as um, being learners or understanding the language to different degrees. And the class met uh, during one semester for one and a half hours, uh, twice weekly for 15 weeks. And I collected student work. I recorded the sessions, um, my own reflections, and then one hour um, semi-structured interviews with each uh, participating student. And so, just so that you have a very brief idea um, of what it looked like. What did we do in the class? This is um, in very broad strokes uh, syllabus. Uh, so we started with exercises, uh, thinking about where we come from. Um, I gave them some text and some media that we discussed in class. We had some visits and they responded creatively. Um, usually the responses could be in any form, any media and any language, which opened the space for them using um, their, their uh, indigenous community languages. Uh, we did some performance exercises. Um, and um, there was one exercise that was um, very central to the class. We shared stories with storytelling about language, about ancestral knowledges we co-wrote scripts we've performed and then we discussed them in groups and then finally there were um, final projects that were either individual or collective so i'm going to show you some examples of the work that students did this is in response to the first exercise where do i come from um, and some of them uh, were focus more on their families, on their communities. So I come from a family, I, go, I come from a family of women. Um, and others were more attached to the to place. So this video is, uh, oh, sorry. Let's see if I can play. <laughs> It's in Chontal, so the language of one of the students who was in her community and she was able to do it with the help of her grandmother. So she talks about and it describes um, her community. And she describes this as being a very fulfilling exercise um, where she also got to interact and learn a lot from her grandmother. Um, these are just some reflections. There's a lot of text, but you're <laughs> free to pause and read. It's in, all in Spanish. Um, but these are some reflections uh, from students in 
one of them is a poem that was a response to the talk by uh, Veronica Kien, who visited our class. These are also some reflections. Uh, some of them were responses to Yasnaya Aguilar, uh, who also came and talked to, talk to the students. Um, both of them were very uh, impactful experiences and they did beautiful responses. So some had, uh, there was one student who had a Twitter exchange with her and that was her response, um, a series of Twitter exchanges. Um, some of them were personal reflections. There were some poems. Um, here's one who says she had never questioned the political character of being indigenous um, and she described an uncomfortable feeling, um, but also something that gave her a lot of, a lot of um, thought. So these are the stories about language and um, they did performances, they recorded them in groups. And these were based on their own stories. Um, sometimes they base them all on one story. Sometimes they change the story, and sometimes they combined um, they combined different stories. So in this case, um, this is David, and his this is his story um, about him going to a shop and saying one word in Zapotec and then the people in the shop replying in Zapotec so he doesn't understand what's happening <laughs> and then there's some exchange with another young person who says why why you learn this language nobody speaks it anymore and then the older people in the store um, talking about the richness of the language and he expressing how he regrets not having learned it from his father and how he really wants to learn it this is another story, they use puppets. And this is a story that's based Don't largely on... Buenas tardes a todos. So it Esta starts es in Zapotec, which is the language of un one of the members, of two of the members. Llega a casa de un... um, and this tells a story of um, a boy who is, lives in, a, in an indigenous community, but he doesn't speak the language, where the, where the language is, is still very dominant and he doesn't speak the language and he wants to learn and his dad gets very mad and he tells him he shouldn't be learning this language, he should be learning Spanish. And he doesn't want him to be, he doesn't want him to be um, abused and bullied in school. Uh, so he prohibits him from, from, from learning the language. So we, they did these performances, we also discussed them in class. Um, from different perspectives. So how did you feel? How did you feel in that role? Why did you do this? Speaking from those different roles that they play and trying to understand the different influences on the ideologies that we hold. Um, and then finally, there were the, the projects at the end and there were a variety of projects that they did following their particular interests. So this was uh, Jocelyn, um, her mom is a speaker of Icots uh, or Wabe. And she remembers a lot of stories that she told her when she was little. And she asked her to tell her a story that she didn't know in Wabe. So she, um, she recorded it and then Jocelyn translated it. Oh, Jocelyn translated it into Spanish uh, with the help of a dictionary and then with the help of her mother. And she says that she was surprised about how much she understood. She doesn't consider Cuando herself a speaker. Niña, mi mamá solía contarme cuentos en Wabi. But both no her mucho, pero unas and her mucho. mom were surprised about how much she actually does understand. So she's retelling how she used to hear all these stories in Babylon when she was little, and her mom would tell her how she heard these stories from her own parents. Um, this is from another student. She, um, she's a speaker of Spanish, and she was very interested in, in language policy and the, the linguistic rights 
that are not known by the general population. So she made these videos where she shows a scenario um, where here one person speaks up but he doesn't um, read a sign that says private property and starts collecting the wood and then he gets abused and taken by the police. So he, she made this with, in part at least, with the intention of creating awareness about these linguistic human rights. And this is a story of place. So this, a, a few students chose to, the student um, to make videos about knowledges from their communities, uh, knowledge that doesn't get taught in, in schools. So one of the questions that Yasnaya asked when she met, uh, when she came to talk to us was, why do we learn the names of all these rivers um, that are far away and um, in Europe, yet we don't know the name of the rivers here. We don't know the names of the mountains. Um, and I think this really clicked for, um, for many students. And so they decided to create videos that, that um, reclaim this, this knowledge is both for themselves, but also to show them to, to other people in their communities. Okay, so what are the possibilities? Um, unfortunately, there's so little time, I wasn't able to show you uh, most of the work that was done, uh, but we see a lot of um, instances of learning from and with each other. So both in the discussions that we had, um, in the performances, um, and then in the discussions about the performances. They learned about stories from their peers whom they might have or might have no, not known before, but, but many of them didn't know um, a lot of, um, a lot of their exp their experiences. They didn't know that they were speakers, that they came from this community, um, from a mystic community, and they really enjoyed um, learning, um, learning with them and from them, um, from each other. Um, it also validating situate, validated situated knowledge. Some students said that they have never been asked to just give an opinion. <laughs> Um, it was mostly just regurgitating uh, answers and ex knowledge um, that were expected. Um, and it offered opportunities to explore identities that are tied to place and community. Um, also questioning dominant power and its influence on the ideologies that we hold. Um, this was done primarily through the through st storytelling and through the performances. Um, and then how dominant ideologies influence our experiences and the experiences of other members of our communities. So why is it that we, that we hold these ideologies? Why is it that we do what we do, say, say what we say? Why do we sometimes hurt people and why are we hurt sometimes? Um, and it also opens spaces for possibility and transformation. So this was also rooted in, in transformation, not just, um, not just the questioning of dominant power, um, but really using that as a starting point to then start imagining different alternatives and different realities. What can we do? What can we do from where we're standing? And so language reclamation, um, as we saw in these first exercises and throughout the class, is deeply tied to identity. It's also reclamation of identity. Sometimes um, it's not a benign process because it, um, it requires being vulnerable. 
Um, and it can also be uncomfortable, like the student who expressed like her discomfort at uh, um, finding how she had at many times romanticized indigenous people, um, essentialized indigenous people as something that belonged to the state. Um, so it can have this, this very difficult moments, but it's also joyous. Um, there's joy in this collective work and there is also hope um, through this focus on action. So what are we going to do? What can we do? And the acknowledgement that we have power. Um, language reclamation also needs to be situated locally. So each one of us, class members, uh, we are standing from different locations and we'll also take this journey into different directions. So some of them uh, already knew that they wanted to do something in their communities, that they want to teach Zapotec, that they want to revitalize uh, the language in their communities where it's no longer spoken. Um, they want to develop different materials. Um, others have started questioning and they mentioned, well, just this reflection is already is already something new and it's taking me in new directions. This is something I have never questioned before. Um, so it takes many forms. And there is one form for each one of our journeys. And so that's all. Thank you very much. Um, I feel that was very <laughs> short, but I hope to see you at the Q&A and you can also contact me uh, by email. Bye, thank you.